In this very short screencast, I am going to give you an overview of anatomy and physiology. First, I will define anatomy and define physiology, and we will then discuss how anatomy and physiology are related to one another. First, let's talk about anatomy. Anatomy is the study of the structure and the shape of the body and its parts. Anatomy is also referred to as the study of form. The word anatomy has Greek roots. Tomi means to cut and ana means a part. So it literally means to cut a part. And this reflects the fact that Historically, anatomy was studied by dissecting or cutting apart animals and the occasional cadaver. In fact, originally dissection was referred to as anatomizing. We can talk about anatomy in terms of gross anatomy or microscopic anatomy. Gross anatomy refers to describing or observing the shape and form of large structures, structures that can easily be seen with the naked eye, not requiring any type of magnification, such as the shape or structure of the ear or the nose, or if we want to talk about internal organs, the liver or the intestines or the stomach, etc. Let's say we want to describe the shape or form of very small structures, structures that require some type of magnifying device to see, such as the gastric glands or gastric pits of the stomach. This would be referred to as microscopic anatomy. And we could even describe an individual cell of the stomach in terms of its shape or structure using a very high-powered microscope. Now that we have defined anatomy as the study of the structure and shape of the body and its parts, let's now talk about physiology, or at least introduce the concept. Physiology is the study of how the body and its parts work. In other words, their function. So how is anatomy related to physiology? How is form related to function? To answer that question, let's look at some organs that you are well acquainted with, the teeth. As you know, you have different types of teeth. You have the incisors shown here on the upper left. You have the canines on the right and you have molars. Incisors are flat and thin. Canines are shaped like a spade shovel, and if you don't know what a spade shovel looks like, there it is. And molars are sort of square, and they have several ridges or cusps. So these different type of teeth have some similarities in terms of their anatomy. They're all hard, they're all rigid. However, they also have some differences in their shape or structure. And these differences reflect their different functions. Incisors are used to bite like an apple and bring the food into the mouth. Canines are used to pierce and to rip like a Slim Jim, or if you are a Twilight fan, to suck blood. Molars are used to grind food down. You chew food at the back of your mouth using your molars. So the differences we see in anatomy or form reflect the differences in physiology or function. So this illustrates the interrelationship between structure or anatomy and function or physiology. Structure determines function or, in other words, anatomy determines physiology, but at the same time, function or physiology 
also determines structure or anatomy. Now that we have defined anatomy as the study of the structure and shape of the body and its parts, let's now talk about physiology, or at least introduce the concept. Physiology is the study of how the body and its parts work, in other words, their function. So how is anatomy related to physiology? How is form related to function? So, just to review, we defined anatomy and physiology, and we then discussed how anatomy and physiology are related.